Hey, welcome back to the internet. Let me give you the lowdown. Last time we tried making a wrench with this thing and we were off by 40 thou. And after checking our backlash, we're, we're missing 12 and a half thou on each side. So I'm trying to figure out where that's coming from. And I'm thinking it's deflection in this whole machine. So this, indi this little indicator here, each one of those blips is one thousandth of an inch. So as we rotate it here, it goes no further than that zero. That means that that is... Uh, the point at which it's the furthest. So if I were to push on the top here, put some downward force on it, you can see that it moves ever so slightly as I'm doing. The goal in all this is to see what the machine experiences now in terms of displacement, and then can we improve upon that. So with that in mind, let's go over here to what I did last night, and that is model this up in an inventor. And over here, we've got a force load, and we're, we're saying 20 pounds right on the spindle, is what we're saying. And then over here, we're going to put 20 pounds, which is essentially all of this garbage. Uh, I weighed it out. It's 20 pounds. We're going to take all of that, put it on the spindle, see what the indicator reads, and then see if this matches that. If this matches that, then we can use this to quickly troubleshoot and see where we're getting deflection and what we can use possibly, and then throw all of our ideas at this electronical copy instead of this real life copy. And we can save ourselves a lot of headache and time and see what, what, it, what needs stiffened up here. And then we can look on here and say, how do we do that in real life? So, without further ado, well, let's do this analysis. So, six tenths to one thousandths of an inch that way is what it's saying. We're getting a deflection. So, let's, uh, let's try not to wake the baby upstairs. Alright, so obviously, by me putting this on here, I could bump uh, the spindle, but we, we have a way of taking that out of the system. <clears throat> Things heavy. Okay, balance. Easy. Don't sneeze. Alright. Put the indicator down here. Alright, so we're going to rotate this. Ever so slightly. See, it doesn't go further than that one thou mark. So, we're indicating one thou minus cosine error, which isn't all that much. So, right, we're we're what we're what this is saying is that we have displaced by adding weight. <laughs> that. That doesn't look sketchy at all. But by adding weight to this top portion here, we have caused this to sink down enough that it has deflected, it has indicated this way, it has deflected this way one thousandths of an inch with this 20 pound load sitting right on the spindle, which is roughly what this says. This says one thousandths of an inch deflection that way on this model. So with this model, we can theorize, well, I should probably take this down before things break, that we'll use this model and figure out what we can do to make that better.
Okay, so we're down to three and a half tenths of deflection uh, instead of eight and a half or eight and change, I think is what it was before. So we're doing much better. Um, so this is adjusted. That's actual. So this has definitely stiffened up the bottom. Uh, previously, that was much, much worse. I think where we can also do better is here on this plate. Um, I think if we thicken that up a bit, we well, we could do better. So let's try that right now. So that was three and a half thou and change there. Well, let's thicken this up. That's eighth inch now, so let's add another 0.125. Y. Turn. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and do that again. See if this gets any better. I think we're going to get minimal results from making these uh, a little better, but let's see. Let's see if I'm wrong. We got we d we have our deflection from before by stiffening up the bottom, which is what I was thinking would probably happen. Yeah, okay, so down another tenth uh, of x x direction displacement, and down a whole thou or is that a whole thou? Can't remember. Anyway, so that, that did do something. All right, um, better than I thought. Uh, uh, let's go ahead and go for the full the full wizen. Let's go. Let's say that I get work to cut me out a piece of stainless steel, and then let's thicken it up. So like, so we're at, I think we're at a quarter right now. So this would be three-eighths thick if we did this. Yeah, do that. All right, so this is three-eighths inch now, and it is. Yeah, those are getting pretty beefy looking. <laughs> All right, let's see here. X displacement. And... Yeah, we're down to 1.95 tenths, and up here we're down to 1 thou deflection. We make these super beefy. All right, what what are we up to stress wise? Yeah, we're still just 1.97 ksi. That's nothing. Where's our max? Our max stress is down here at this hole, which kind of makes sense because there's only really the one hole holding all this together. Think about it. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. Do you agree with me? You do. Oh, excellent. This is a great idea, don't you think? Yeah? All right. So helpful to have a, a yes man. Yeah. So I think we'll do a quarter to half inch deep, quarter 20 hole every two inches. Um, I think it's seven eighths from the center. Uh, out to the hole. I'm a little nervous. I don't really like drilling and tapping into something uh, without getting a better plan. But uh, that's that's kind of the that's my thinking. Let me know what you think. Uh, good idea, bad idea. Maybe a big flat piece of steel underneath here, uh, four inches wide, the same width as this, or maybe two three inch tubes. I don't know. I mean, we got to kind of bolt it to it, no matter what, which is really my, the only reason I'm kind of hesitant to do this, is because of all the, the, the threading, and the drilling and the threading I'll have to do into the base plate, you know. Clamping something's easy, drilling and tapping and ruining your piece, for that's forever. Should still have access to the motor in the back, too. That shouldn't, I shouldn't have any interference. The only other thing I can think of is that we may have like a, a hollow gonging uh, kind of action going on at this point. And by that I mean like uh, it's kind of like a hollow tube, right? You can end up. Uh, is there a reason I can't look at this? 
There we go. So I'm a little worried that this tube on the bottom is going to act like a hollow gong and just resonate. So I may have to put a cap on the end of this. And... Well, crap. I'm not even sure how I would do that. Because I can't really fill it with sand or epoxy or anything. Because i got to get at these bolt holes. These bolts up here. So maybe the thing to do then is, is, is if this acts like a giant resonance chamber and is gonging every time I go and hit uh, some steel with the, the bit, maybe the thing to do then is to just get this uh, like a 4 inch by 16 inch by whatever and drill and tap holes uh, into it and have that act as the base plate and just shim. Uh, I mean, this is just what I have on hand and I don't think it's really suited for this in my opinion so this was nice but we probably need to go and do something different in the future all right well at any rate this is kind of my thoughts on how to how to stiffen it up you can make these nice and stiff and beefy uh, these are 3 8 inch thick now um, and that that helps quite a bit but really your main downfall is this piece right here because this has bracing here so if you apply force here, that bends and pushes, or if you apply force here and push down, you know, really, you have a foot here and a foot here, and this center in the middle, this portion in the middle is going to uh, undergo a, a pretty large bending moment, and there's only a little bit of reinforcement here and, and thickening in that axis. So, yeah, I don't think this is the way to go, but it's food for thought. Let me know what your thoughts are. Comments, rude remarks down below in the doobly-doo. Have a good one. Thanks for watching.